Yeah, good morning YouTube. I finally had success here. This is my pack number five and my second adjustment and I dropped it from 33.5 down to 32.9 amp hours. That's milliamp hours on the displays. Yeah, this one was really strange because I started at 33.2, just a little bit above this, and I initially swapped a 4392 milliamp hour pair for a 3940. So that would be a minus 452 milliamp hour drop in capacity, yet the capacity went up to 33.5. But the second adjustment I did, I swapped a 4218 for a 3505, which is a 713 milliamp hour drop, and I got a 700 milliamp hour drop. So the second adjustment worked out right to my tested value. But yeah, here's my uh, cell voltages on the 4S pack, but we're 28 millivolts. And uh, one, oh, two and four now are the off ones. Sometimes it's one and three. But yeah, there we go. We got 386, 383, 385, 386. Yeah, they're holding, holding pretty steady. Yeah, within about 29 or 30 millivolts. And I think that's what this uh, bottom balance pack holds roughly, is it, it usually stays in that, that range. But yeah, there we go. So now I've got uh, pack number five is all capacity match. So I've got a couple of packs that are up in the high 32s. And what I might do is put four of these packs that are pretty close to each other together. This one was just my first four that I finished. But now I'll have uh, this one here, number five. And then I've got number 10. And then I believe the other two I have are already within my target range. And then I have two more that I've tested. So that should give me a total of 10 groups of uh, 20 cells or 10 pairs. These are still the pairs that I'm working with. So I think I will put together two 4S batteries out of that uh, group of 10. And so I may end up tearing this one apart and shuffling some of the modules around. But I figure I'll, I'll wait till I get all 10 adjusted. And then what I need to do here is I'll do a stop. And what I like to do is put these back on storage charge before I do anything else with them. And then I'll pull this one out once it's finished. And then I'll start working on pack number 10 here and it's already at storage charge voltage. Yeah, so this, this pack number 10 here measures out at 33.2 amp hours, so I need to drop it maybe three or 400. So not a big drop, but I just want to get it down into this uh, 32 and a half to 33 range as measured on this charger. That's the next step, but anyway, I finally got that one. Two tries to get that. One that was totally unexpected results, and then the second one is totally expected. I find it really interesting how you can get such wildly different results from cells that were all supposedly tested pretty similar, but I, you know, I may have tested things on different chargers, and maybe one was really hot and one was really cold. The problem is I don't know exactly the conditions that I, you know, what charger did I use, what was the temperature, what was the settings I used. But anyway, that's uh, some of the adventures in getting these things capacity matched. So I've got one more to do, and that'll give me a total of 10 modules, and then I'll try to match those up put the similar capacity ones together into a battery pack and then I'll, I'll have two extra ones that I won't use right away until I get some more cells tested. So once this uh, storage charge finishes then I'm going to drop down to pack number 10. I move my uh, charging cables over to this pack and then I'm going to pick one of those 10 pair of cells, pull it out and replace it with another one. 
yeah, I'll probably pick something like 38 or 3900 milliamp hours and replace it with a 34 or 3500. That's what I always try to do is just try to make one swap and then see what happens. And the only way you know what happens is you got to charge it all the way up and then discharge it and measure the capacity. And if you don't get it in range, then you got to go here, charge it up, swap another cell, and then retest it. So yeah, hopefully I'll finish up my pack number 10 pretty directly and then uh, on to the next steps here. But yeah, I just wanted to show you some of the uh, trials and tribulations of trying to capacity match these. I have all the capacity data and I did all the measurements myself and yet they sometimes throw you for a loop. You know, sometimes they're dead on and then other times you get just totally unexpected results. So what I've found is you can't just add up the capacities of all 10 pairs and use that. You've got to actually put all 10 together and then measure the capacity of the whole group. And it seems like sometimes if you swap out a cell, the whole group works better so yeah, if you have any questions about that, uh, post up in the comment section below and I'll put some other videos over here on the side. And as always, thanks for watching.